Bueno, muy buenos días para todas las personas que se unen a esta sesión informativa con The University of Sussex. Mi nombre es Karen Martínez, soy integrante del equipo de Consejería Académica y Relaciones Internacionales de Colfuturo y el propósito de esta sesión básicamente es brindarles a todos ustedes aquellos datos e información relevantes y sus planes eh, académicos están encaminados en llevar a cabo un programa de posgrado en esta gran institución académica. Queremos contarles que estamos iniciando este mes de agosto con una gran variedad de webinars informativos para todos, así que si se encuentran muy interesados en la oferta académica de universidades de países como el Reino Unido e Irlanda, con las que Colfuturo además tiene convenio, todo este mes vamos a estar realizando sesiones como la del día de hoy para brindarles la información que requieran. Eh, bueno, el día de hoy nos acompaña Casia, ella es representante de University of Sussex y pues nos va a brindar información súper importante sobre temas como financiación, hospedaje, becas, oferta académica y recomendaciones en general para todos ustedes. En adición, eh, para recordarles también, abordaremos eh, información relativa al convenio que tenemos entre Colfuturo y esta universidad que consta de una beca del 100% para un beneficiario de Colfuturo en un programa de maestría específicamente y también de un descuento del 20% en el valor de la matrícula para los estudiantes de maestría y doctorado. Cabe mencionar que si tienen alguna duda o inquietud, pueden escribirla en el cajoncito de Q&A y las responderemos a lo largo de esta sesión. Casi nos ayudará en esto. Así que sin más preámbulos, te doy la palabra. Casi, thank you so much for being here. So you can go ahead and start with your presentation. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited to be here and speak to you all today. And apologies, I'm in English. I am trying to learn some Spanish, but um, it's not my strongest subject area. So hopefully if you speak to me again, um, we might be able to have a chat in Spanish as well. And um, as Karen very kindly introduced me, I'm Kasia. I'm the Senior International Officer here at Sussex for the Americas. So alongside um, my colleague, Kevin, we would be here to support you on any journey that you choose um, for coming to the University of Sussex and to assist you along the way from the initial information finding um, sessions and like this, all the way through to um, when you get on the plane to come to us. We're working with a lot of our students at the moment as they're doing their visa applications. And we really hope that that is something that we can help you with this time next year. So today I'm going to introduce you to the University of Sussex, um, our campus, what we're all about, and um, talk about our student experience options, and then also introduce you to the city that we're part of, which is called Brighton, um, which we'll go into a little bit later. So as a quick overview of the University of Sussex, we are a campus-based university down on the southeast coast of the United Kingdom. Um, we're about an hour south of London, um, also about an hour to France. So we're pretty much as far south as you can get in the UK. Um, we are home to about 18,000 students from all over the world. And it's one of the things that we are so um, proud of at Sussex is to welcome people from all over the world, from different backgrounds, and have a, such a welcoming and collaborative community here at Sussex. We welcome a good amount of students from um, Latin America, so between sort of 90 to 110 students each year, and um, mostly into postgraduate um, degrees with us. Um, But as I said, our student body is incredibly diverse. About 30% of the students that are studying at Sussex come from outside of the UK um, and from about 140 different nations as well. So it is all over the world, which is something really exciting. We are known as a research intensive university um, and 89% of our researchers class is world leading. Um, and that is super important um, for you, particularly into postgraduate degrees. You want to have be taught by people who are at the forefront of their academic careers and um, who are very much active in their learning. And um, the academics at Sussex absolutely do that. Particularly important if you are thinking of a research-based degree as well, um, having that there as well. <laughs>
as you can see, we're a pretty comprehensive university in what we teach. Um, and some of our main accolades are on the screen here. So we have been ranked first in the world for development studies, which is something we're incredibly proud of um, for the last uh seven years running so since 2017 and um, this incorporates uh five different departments within the university of sussex so um the institute of development studies the school of global studies the school of media arts and humanities the business school and the school of education as well um, and there are plenty of postgraduate degrees that are incorporating development studies into them um in very niche areas as well and um we are the global leader in this and that's what we are very much well known for. Um, we are overall rank as a pretty consistently good university, particularly in things like public policy, which we're currently ranked third in the world for as well. Um, for our student diversity, for our contributions to sustainability and for our um, strength in things like the social sciences too. This is really where we lay our foundations at Sussex. We are what we would call a comprehensive university and that video really indicates that. So whether you are looking to study quantum physics or gender studies, you'll find a um, programme for it here. Um, these are just the sort of broad subject areas in which we cover at Sussex, but they're very specific degrees. We are also very focused on interdisciplinary teaching at Sussex. So it might be that you are studying um, gender studies, but you won't just look at it from a historical context. You might look at it um, in film, in literature, in art, in music, um, in science as well. It's really broad spectrum where we really like to bring different departments together to be able to continue that collaborative learning experience for our students. Um, just a little bit about the Sussex campus. So um, we are very fortunate to be set in the grounds of the South Downs National Park. We're the only English university to be um, have that location. Uh, and despite what images might look like, we are really well connected as well. So um, we are very close to the city of Brighton and that is only uh, 10 minutes away by train or about 25 minutes by bus. We're only 30 minutes to the nearest international airport, which is Gatwick Airport, and um, about one hour to London as well. So you can see the rest of the country and the rest of the continent incredibly easy from being based at Sussex. You'll also be joining a networked university. So Sussex is a very outward looking university and particularly globally, um, we, were one, we were the first university um, in the UK to offer a study abroad experience, for example. And a global and international outlook has always been incredibly important to Sussex. These are just some of our partner institutions um, that you can see here, whether it be different universities, government bodies, and the way that the work that goes on within the university really shapes um, issues globally um, throughout the world, uh, whether it be within the School of Global Studies or a collaborative effort bringing um, different ag um, agencies together as well. Oh, we have already got, excuse me, that's a duplicate side. So just to, um, touch on um, requirements that we're looking for. Uh, we are typically looking for 8.0 out of 10 um, in a post for postgraduate taught um, degree, so a master's degree. Um, a lot of subject areas will require you to have a specific background or a relevant background um, area for your studies as well. And then if you're looking towards a PhD, um, we would need to see your undergraduate studies, your master's degree and a research proposal as well. Um, applications for postgraduate degrees will open in October. I mean, we don't usually have a straight launch date, but um, usually the end of October is a pretty um, good area to go for. Um, we assess applications on a rolling basis so as they come in um, but we don't have a hard deadline so we would encourage an early application so you can make your plans accordingly particularly the things that plan for funding and scholarships but um, we would rather you apply a little bit later with a really good application than a rushed one in early October. We also will require um, your um, proof of your English language proficiency so um, IELTS is the most common one we see, but we do accept in loads of others, which um, can be pointed to on our website. Um, our typical requirement is around 6.5 with 6.0 in each component. Some degrees are slightly higher than that as well, but um, those are all very clearly marked on our website. And obviously we can absolutely help with those questions as well. You don't need to submit your English um, language score if you haven't yet taken the test with your application. So that's something that can be submitted later down the line. In terms of our tuition fees, um, our starting rate is £21,500 per 
next year. So um, obviously for most of you that will be a one year, but there are a couple of um, longer master's programs. Um, and a MBA is 26,000. PhDs vary quite substantially depending on the um, subject area. So it's always worth checking the details on those. And again, we can absolutely help with that. With living expenses, um, I've kind of taken an average of our living cost guide. So this is a middle point, um, about £18,000 for the year. That would include your rent, your food, your flights, your um, general living expenses, your entertainment, um, all in on that one as well. And, and there's a lot, a, a really good breakdown at the um, web link that is on the screen there for you as well. We are proud to offer a number of different funding options at Sussex, um, aside from uh, the Colfaturo partnership, which I'll come to in just a second. So these are some of our domestic ones, our Chancellor International Scholarship, our um, Internet IDS Graduate Scholarship. Um, certain schools have awards that are available and multiple departmental awards. And then we work with global bodies, um, bodies things like Cheatening, British Council Columbia, to offer other funding options too. With our Colfaturo um agreement um it is offered as a 20 percent discount on your tuition fees for everybody and then we also um have one full scholarship covering a hundred percent of the tuition fees um to you as well um so obviously this is something that you'll all be interested in and um are worth having a go with we'd fully encourage you to apply through this system so what is university like at Sussex? So societies and um, sports make up quite a big part of um, integrating into the university. And there's just a selection of the ones that we hear, have here. I think a lot of people think that so clubs and societies are for undergraduates only. And at Sussex, that is absolutely not the case. We welcome people from all over um, the university into our clubs and societies. So you can absolutely get involved in something that you would like to, um, or as many as you would like to even. And these are all the support, sports that we offer. Again, you can take part in these um, more on a casual level, or if you are someone that is a little bit more competitive and would like to play um, against other teams and universities, you can absolutely do that as well. Um, in the British university system, there's typically no teaching on Wednesday afternoons um, to be dedicated to sports and extracurricular activities. So you will have time in your schedule in which to do that. And then if the group organised activities aren't really your vibe, um, there's still plenty of options to um, look at. Um, in terms of entertainment on campus, there's plenty of places to eat and drink. Um, we have our weekly farmers market, lots of festivals and celebrations. And um, one of our big ones that we absolutely love um, is our One World Week celebration. So um, this celebrates the internationality of the university. Uh, we host it in March and clubs and societies that represent different communities and cultures and nationalities host events throughout the week, um, kind of as a sort of showcase of something that is important to them, whether it be food, drink, um, uh, clothing, national sport, uh, national um, dance style, whatever it is. And then there's also wider university events too um, as well. One of our big things that we're preparing for at the moment is welcoming of new students into the university. And there is a whole host of events being planned to make sure that that transition to coming to Sussex is smooth and enjoyable and fun as well. There's also two sports centres on campus. There's things like open mic nights, themed nights to go along with any uh, part of the uh, sort of calendar. And there's also a 24 hour security team on campus. Um, campus is outside the city centre. It's a pretty safe place to be, but it is there should you need it. And then in terms of other university facilities, um, it really is like a small town. Um, there's 6,000 people living on campus at any one time. And um, there's everything here that you would need. So the 24 hour library um, is there for you during semester and out of semester, it, I think operates about 16 hours a day. So it's also pretty um, around the clock. Uh, we have just opened our brand new student center, which is home to all of our support services, um, which is an amazing building, um, which um, is for use for you guys as students there to sit, socialize, study, but also access our different support network. Um, Obviously, we've got things like a supermarket on campus. We also have an international food um, store, a post office, a healthcare centre. It's all here for you. So a lot of people think, oh, well, they can actually enjoy just life on campus. And that's it, really. But there is then so much more to the Sussex experience. So um, Sussex is just outside of the city centre. Um, but Brighton is uh, really the place that you will spend a lot of time as a student. 
Um, Brighton is a zip home to about 300,000 people um, outside of the student population, and there's about 40,000 students in the city. So it feels very welcoming community to our students, but it's not like a university town, and that's all there is to it. It has its own distinct culture and identity as well. Um, it is a very um, liberal place um, in terms of politics and attitudes and identities, um, and very welcoming and embracing of people from all over the world. Um, it's also a very quirky place. Um, so uh, there is lots of good like thrift stores and independent music venues and um, arts and culture is very important to the city. We're also on the water, so we enjoy life on the beach. And beach life is one of the main um, attractions of um, life in Brighton. Um, I wouldn't say they're like tropical beaches by any stretch of the imagination. And that water is very cold. Um, it is, was it mid-August we're getting towards and it's still only about 18 degrees in there. But it's refreshing on the days that we do have that really hot weather. Um, the beach is great for water sports. There's also great nightlife and bars and restaurants along the beach as well. Um, and I don't know if it's something about being by the water, but it definitely gives the city a definitely more relaxed um, attitude and vibe. Um, city living is also big for us and um, we have two sort of areas of the city one is where you will find the shopping mall with the international brands in but the real heart of Brighton is found in the area called the lanes um, it is the streets are maybe six meters wide um, and it's the small streets from when Brighton was a fitting village back in the sort of 1400s and it is really home to that sort of bohemian core that Brighton has um, with um, loads of independent coffee shops, record stores, boutiques, um, restaurants, uh, music venues, comedy clubs, cinemas, like it is really that cultural core of the city there. And Brighton is a very proud city to support its local vendors. And um, it's something that we love doing. Um, and I say we, I grew up in Brighton. So um, I grew up living this life. Um, we would much rather go to our local coffee shop than use Starbucks. It's very much part of the sort of identity of the city. And then we're also really lucky to be surrounded by this beautiful countryside. Um, if you are more of an outdoorsy person and you enjoy a hike or going trail run or biking, for example, that area is absolutely fantastic for it. Um, and getting to grips with nature, having that right on the doorstep of campus is so fantastic. Um, this picture in the bottom right hand corner is actually just taking about a 10 minute walk from the back of campus. You can walk out the back of campus into this area and enjoy that space. Um, for you as well. And one of the things I love about Brighton um, particularly are the celebrations that go on in the city. And there are so many throughout the year that it's quite hard to keep up and get involved with them all. Um, but I picked out some of my favourite ones that are really important, I think. The first one is our Pride um, celebration. Um, it is the largest one in the UK. Um, and we welcome typically about 600,000 visitors to the city over um, a weekend. It was actually this weekend just passed. And it is a weekend of celebration of love and bringing the community together. Um, it starts with this massive parade through the streets of Brighton. And then there's a two day music festival that complements it, as well as street parties and smaller events. It still um, hosts this sort of protest vibe of Pride as well, um, where it's sort of making the point that there's still progress to be made on these issues. But um, it's a fantastic experience. Um, friendly for everyone whether you're part of the community or not um the second one well it's really two in one is um the brighton fringe festival which is the largest comedy festival in england and the brighton festival which the university is a sponsor of and um, they are two arts festivals that run concurrently with each other in may um, and it really feels like the um city is shaking off winter when these happen pop-up venues come up all over the city with live events um throughout the day and night um for all of the different uh sort of arts um categories that there are uh, to be celebrated and um, it kicks off with the children's parades and so all the local schools get involved they have a theme of the year and they have their school bands and samba bands and um art directors involved with all of getting them all ready and then it's a month long um festival after that the third one is always around the christmas time and it's actually something that only happens in brighton as far as i'm aware and it's called burning the clocks um and it's basically a celebration for winter solstice so welcoming in winter with a festival of light almost um so we march again through the streets with these um paper lanterns and we march walk down all the way to the beach 
um, where there is a firework display and it's yeah welcoming in winter and embracing the darkness as well. But there's also loads of different smaller ones throughout the year, whether it be food, drink, music based. Um, it might be a simple as um, a bike ride or the marathon weekend is always something to behold in Brighton as well. So there's so much to do in Brighton. I guarantee you will not be bored. Um, as I said, I've lived here my entire life and um, I'm not bored of living here yet. And our alumni love um, the university and um, always want to come back. And um, I would point you to a couple of these profiles on the British Council Instagram um, to have a look at um, some of the work that our students have done um, recently since graduating. Um, unfortunately, my links aren't working to these today, but they are still live on the British Council Instagram. I did check. So um, worth having a look at those. Um, and we have some really notable alumni um so currently um the president of costa rica um is an alumni for, of us here at sussex and so many of our alum go into work in fields that um give back i would say and i often get a question of what's a typical sussex student um i think it's very hard to say that there is one um we accept obviously welcome people from all over the world from different backgrounds from different educational backgrounds as well but i think the real true um essence of a Sussex student is that they want to give back and want to do good in the world um, which is why we see so many people go into the public service area and to work into development fields um, with poverty with gender with identity with education um, around the world as well and and there's some great profiles on our website that I would fully encourage you to um, have a look at and so I appreciate that I've gone through that presentation incredibly quickly but thank you so much for listening um i see there's some questions coming in so um, i'm glad that we'll have time to go through those if you have any questions at all you can reach myself um at the email address on the screen so the americas at sussex.ac.uk we are absolutely always here to help to answer any questions that you have about studying at sussex applying to the uk um what life is like in the UK as well. We uh, love answering your questions and we'd love to hear from you um, as part of your journey to the UK. But I wish you the best of luck um, with your research and your applications for the coming year. And I um, hopefully look forward to seeing you at Sussex incredibly soon. Karen, did you want me to do the questions or will you go through those? Yes, Cassia, thank you. Thank you very much for all the information that you have given us. So everything you mentioned uh, sounds so good. <laughs> so here we have some questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, Jose asks, how long approximately does the admission process for postgraduate studies? Yeah, so um, it depends on what time of year you apply. Um, so sometimes the years are busier than others for processing times. Um, so if you were to apply in November, probably a sort of two to three week turnaround time. Um, if you were to apply in February when it's a bit busier, um, probably looking more like three to five weeks um, as well. And it will also depend on um, if your application needs to be further reviewed by our academic members or staff and things like that. But for a standard application, I'd say anywhere typically between two and four weeks. Perfect, Kasia, thank you. So, well, Marisol asks, the scholarship, uh, um, I think that she has mentioned with Calvatura, um, the scholarship is for any specialization, for example, data science? Yes, so um, let me go back to our scholarships um screen here so for the call for Truro, um obviously discount that's applied to as part of the partnership that is applicable to any um subject area as is the one fee weight full tuition fee waiver that we have and um, for the university scholarships that we also offer so things like our chance international scholarship that is eligible on any eligible program um, and things like data science are absolutely fine um also uh data science um, sits within the business school I believe so there's access to the business school discounts and things like that as well so um, yes and you can layer scholarships too and you can receive the Colfatura discount with discount uh, scholarships as well. Okay perfect thank you well uh, Juan Sebastian is asking if I present the IELTS on 2021 and I got a good result aid but it's no longer valid I must retake it? Correct yes so you can apply without retaking it. 
to have your application assessed as a whole, but we would need an updated IELTS test, yes. Okay. Or any other English language test. So um, we accept TOEFL um, and a number of other different ones as well, um, which might be more convenient for you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Marisa Lask, uh, when closed the period of application? Yeah, so we actually keep our applications open very late. Um, so for 2025, um, September entry, we would typically close on the 1st of August 2025. Now, I would not recommend that you wait that long to apply. And obviously for your scholarships and culpatura and things like that, you will need to be way ahead of that. I would recommend um, a last sort of submission date um, is in March. That'll give plenty of time for um, scholarships, um, but also um, for sorting out all of the logistical factors of coming to the UK, visas, accommodation, all of that kind of thing as well. Okay, perfect. Well, Jose is asking, does every applicant that asks for the computer credit automatically gets postulated for the discount and scholarship? Bueno, Jose, pues, te respondo yo, sí, así es. Eh, bueno, pues, digamos que para, eh, particularmente para la beca del 100%, eh, depende de los criterios de la universidad en este caso, pero para el resto, que es básicamente el descuento del 20% para todos los seleccionados, tanto de Colfuturo como admitidos por la universidad, pues sí, automáticamente vas a ser parte de la lista de elegibles. So, Cassia, in relation with this question, um, eh, and in relation with our agreement, how do you select this one student that will be received the scholarship for the whole 100? So, we um, look at the... Um score that Colfaturo um provides when um sort of ranking your um university's um applicants and also your academic backgrounds on that. So it's on academics that we will be looking at. Okay, perfect. So well uh, Wendy is asking about the requirements to Ooh. access to a master degree. Yep. So um as a reminder, I'll just go back a couple of slides. So um, a GPA of eight or above um, is pretty standard of what we require. Um, I would recommend looking at your, the individual program that you are interested in applying to, to just to triple check that information, or we can absolutely help with that as well. Um, so there will be a grade requirement and often a subject area requirement as well um, that will be needed to be seen. Um, and then for some of our development studies programs, is it, there is a work experience requirement too, um, but it's only five programs that that's applicable on. Okay, thank you. Okay, Juan Sebastián say that uh, he maybe missed it, but is there a discount for accommodation in Brighton or directly on the university? Yeah, I've just realized that I forgot to include my accommodation slides. I'm so sorry um, for that oversight. So um, we have accommodation at the university that you are um, guaranteed as placed in as an international master's student, providing you apply by usually August 1st is the deadline um, to apply for the accommodation. Um, there's a lot of different accommodation options in on campus so um if i move out of the way hopefully you can see in my tiny little screen around here but all of this part of campus here this is all accommodation um so the six thousand rooms on campus um you always have your own bedroom there's often options that have their own bathroom as well um and then you would share a kitchen and living space with a set amount of people um but yeah different price points um available there's no discounts on them um but there are ways that you can make it more manageable for yourself um, and then obviously you can rent in the city center in the private sector as well if you wanted to um, again there's no discounts on that because that is all controlled by um, the private sector but um, there's plenty of accommodation in the city center should you wish to rent an apartment with a couple of people and things like that okay that's perfect thank you well um juan pablo asks, is GRE required or taken into account? We don't require it at all. Um, and the British, most British universities don't require standardized testing. It's not something that we particularly use. Um, that said, if you have taken it, um, 
always put it in your application um, on under your qualification section. We'd love to see what you've been achieving and it's only going to help build a, your profile up um, to make an assessment. So worth including, but it's not going to be a standard requirement that we need. Hey, thank you. So Cassia, um, David is uh, asking us uh, about the scholarship to a 100%. Mm -hmm. So this apply only for masters or also for a PhD? Um, I would need to triple check that. I think it's for both. Um, but I think if it was for PhD, it'd just be for one year only, not your full PhD. But I will, I can double check that um, if you want to email in. Um, we can have that. I will double check at all the paperwork and then let you know. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, Juan Sebastián, ask us. Um, in terms of making more appealing of our application, is there something that can enrich it? For example, volunteering activities? Um, yes and no. So it's important to remember that when you are applying to Sussex and most other British universities, we're going to be assessing your ability to complete an academic degree successfully. Um, so your academic background is important and will hold the most weight realistically. Um, that said, we want to hear about you as the person and what you've been doing and anything extra that you've done to support that. Um, so you should always tell us about that. And our Sussex application system has good opportunities to do that. So we have a section that's entirely dedicated to your academics. We have a section that's entirely dedicated to sort of work experience, whether that be paid or unpaid. And then you also have your personal statement, which you can tell us about these extra things that you've been doing. Um, so it's always great to put as much information as you can in um, as possible. I would say there's a slight caveat to that to make sure it's relevant information that you're telling us um, to the degree. And of course, if your degree has work experience requirements, then we want absolutely need to hear about that as well. Okay, perfect, Hesha. So David uh, says, if I don't get the discount of 20% for PhD, there are any other ways to fund the program and research? Thinking about a PhD program, bueno, pues yo particularmente, David, le quiero responder, en este caso, eh, para ese 20% aplican todas las personas que hayan sido, que sean beneficiarias de Colfuturo, tanto para maestría y doctorado, y que también estén admitidas en la universidad. Así que en teoría, si tú ya fuiste admitido a la universidad y también seleccionado por Colfuturo para hacer tu doctorado, ya estarías en la lista de elegibles para este descuento del 20%. Sin embargo, le vamos a preguntar a Casia si hay otro tipo de becas o descuentos eh, para estos programas. So, Casia, mm, eh, maybe uh, this university offer another ways to uh, fund the programs of PhD and Master, eh, not only Cultura, eh, another, maybe. So, uh, yeah, just to double just to clarify on PhD, PhD, Colfuturo mm. and recipients do get 20% off of their tuition fees. They're just, I don't think it, the 100% one is eligible for PhD. In terms mm -hmm. of other funding, um, so as I mentioned, we partner with um, uh, sort of global funding bodies like Chevening. They can absolutely apply through those. Um, Sussex doesn't offer full scholarships um, at all. So uh, for a lot of people, it is making up funding of, lots of different pieces so it might be um a scholarship from sussex it might be something that's offered within your home country it might be then a bit of private funding as well so uh, sort of making things up a little bit um with phd funding as well um there are um the options of joining research that's already ongoing at the university where funding has been allocated um or um a sort of work study um, situation. So I have, I'm working with a PhD student coming to us this year. She is going to be working as a tutor um, in the School of Psychology throughout her PhD um, for undergraduate and master's students and therefore having some of her fees waived as part of that as well. Perfect, Cassia, thank you. So, well, Marisol asks about a uh, Relative to the uh, scholarship to 100, again, so she uh, asks if these include uh, only tuition fees, uh, excluding living expenses, right? Correct, yeah. Right, okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, um, Kasia, through social media, we have another question, so, oh, so right. cool. <laughs> uh, one question is, if can students work on campus? 
Yes. So your um, visa that you will, will apply for to come to the UK allows you to work for 20 hours per week during semester. And then you can work for 40 hours per week outside of semester. Um, and actually, it's not restricted to on campus only. You can work wherever you would like. Um, you could work in Brighton. You could work on campus. You could have we have some students that do both. So they have um, two jobs and they might do um, 10 hours a week in working in a bar in Brighton. And then they might work um, as a student ambassador for the university. So um, it's more about your time working. So 20 hours is the maximum that you are allowed to under your visa during um, semester. But yes, you can absolutely okay. do that. Okay, it sounds great, thank you. And the last question that I have is, is there any problem if I travel with my family? And if you offer maybe any help for this? So we would need to check, um, so this is a government rule, unfortunately, and most recently they have changed the terms on which um, students can bring their family to the UK. And for the majority of students, they have said this is no longer um, applicable. Um, sponsored students often are allowed to bring them. Um, so we would just need to double check under the terms of the agreement with Coffeture if that was um, okay to do. Um, in terms of the assistance giving to families, we do have some family accommodation on campus. It is incredibly limited. So we would always recommend that you reach out and um, chat with us about that um, before um, making a big decision to move um, your family over to the UK. Um, obviously, we can give advice about renting a house in the private sector and things like that, but um, obviously, and schools and things like that. But we would want you to actually speak to us about that, I would say. Perfect, Kasia. Again, thank you so, so much for your participation, for uh, your time, for your support, everything oh, that you, that the information that you have given us today sounds so, so good. And this destination looks so interesting. So Kasia, maybe, I don't know if you have a final advice for our attendees today? Yeah, of course. So I think my final advice is do your research um, about the university that you're looking at. Um, obviously, we'd love to welcome you all to Sussex, but we want it to be the right decision for you. So look at our programmes. Our website it has an incredible amount of information on. Um, you can see all of the different degree programmes. You can see what you would study within them as well. Like it breaks it down, all of the classes that you would take and how you'd be assessed in those classes and things like that. And make sure it is the right programme for you. Um, I would also make sure that Brighton is a place that you want to live in and you're wanting a campus based university, making sure those things are right for you. Um, my other piece of advice is I am a super organized person, so I would be one of those people getting everything done as early as possible to give myself as much breathing space um, to get everything done in case there's any delays with anything. Um, and then my final thing would be, um, and maybe this is a bit more um personal but it's okay uh, is to really um sort of if you're feeling like this is a bit of a daunting or nervous thing to be doing about thinking of going away for a year or maybe longer um I can only tell you my experience so I've grown up in Brighton I went to University of Sussex which is you know five kilometers from where my parents lived I was very much a hometown girl and I studied away from home um in the US for a year and I was so nervous about doing it. Like I was terrified and I, I almost backed out of it, if I'm going to be entirely honest with you. And I went and I had the time of my life. It was I look, it was 10 years ago and I look back on it. It was such fond memories. I still have friends that I go and see when I'm in the US or if they're in the UK, we see each other. Um, so I guess it would be almost to sort of embrace the challenge of it all. It can seem really daunting and quite intimidating, but the benefits will outweigh any negatives for sure and um, hope that you will get to enjoy an experience in the UK whether that be at Sussex or one of the other amazing institutions that's around the UK as well. Thank you, thank you Cassia, really it's a so good advice so we look forward to see you in a next uh, opportunity. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks everyone, nice to see you all. A todos, muchas gracias por su asistencia y por sus preguntas. Sé que la información que se presentó aquí fue de gran utilidad, así que no duden en seguir indagando sobre University of Sussex y pues también, claro, de Cold Future. Hasta pronto. Thank you, Sad.